Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Wanted to talk a bit today about stress and coping with stress in a shit hits the fan situation. I'm certainly not an expert by any means on the topic of stress management. If anything, I'm still a total novice. Although I do try to test myself regularly and push the boundaries of my stress threshold further and further. I've always struggled with sort of keeping my calm under the pressure and I'm starting to improve in that respect by utilizing certain breathing techniques and uh, just a general sort of uh, cognitive behavioral training to try to decondition some of the things that have happened to me in the past. So for stress, uh, there's a Bukowski, I don't know if anybody knows Charles Bukowski, you might hate him, you might love him, he was a poet, a drunken poet, and he made a poem called The Shoelace. And I'm not going to read it or, you know, I'll put a link to the poem. But essentially, it's something to the effect that, you know, so many large things, large events can happen in your life. But the one thing that's going to, the one thing that pushed him over the edge was a shoelace that just would not keep tied up, would not stay tied up. There's a straw that breaks the camel's back. One can endure, you know, so much pain and misery of such large proportions, and then one little thing, one little mosquito, one little bead of sweat, one little word that somebody says pushes you over the edge to a point where you have a stress, uh, have a breakdown, essentially. And it's interesting because, you know, I can totally relate to that idea of the shoelace being what the straw that breaks the camel's back. There's so many little things that are going to add up in a situation like that. You know, you're going to have the family dynamics, the the wife or the girlfriend or the kid speaking at you. You know, you're going to have the hunger, you know, the uh, nutrient deficiency. You're going to have the stress of, you know, potential EROL or potential uh, WROL stress, all the things that come along with that. You're not going to have air conditioning, you know, so you're going to be hot, bothered, or you're going to be really cold and, you know, uh, so you're going to have all these little tiny stresses that are just going to be like, you know, poking away at you. It's like death by a thousand paper cuts, you know. And it's going to be... The, the determining factor is going to be how well you can cope with stress, how much you can go with the flow, as I was talking about in my last video about not going against the grain of nature, trying to go with the grain of nature, trying to go with the flow of events that's happening. They say a person can only handle three, two to three major stressful events before a complete nervous breakdown. And now those big things are things like, um, things like, uh, you know, divorce, Death of a spouse, death of a child, relationship breakup, job loss, things of that nature. And those are just the, the big things. I mean, chances are, if something got really bad, one of those things might happen. Hopefully not, but, you know, um, grieving on some level might have to happen. But it's all those little tiny things, you know, that are going to, you know, push you over the edge and make you have make you emotionally unstable so how we cope with all these little little tidbits these little stressors you know could be the defining factor in how we act how we 
what course of action we take. And so it's really important that we sort of, you know, be mindful of our state, our, our state of mind before things get out of hand, you know. Uh, it's not... The reason why they call it stress management, and that's what I, I teach in uh, addictions counseling, they don't call it stress reduction because there's a recognition of the fact that, you know, stress can't be reduced necessarily. You know, you don't always have the option to reduce stress. So you have to learn how to cope with it in some sort of way. But the idea there is that you can have ways to, if you have for all the stress that you incur, you must have some sort of outlet, uh, some sort of uh, ground, if you will, to channel that energy through you. And I, like I said, I don't want to talk all wishy-washy, but there is uh, the need for a release of all that pent-up stress before it comes out as an outburst or as a attack on somebody else or just as something that's emotionally are behaviorally inappropriate because it likely will and such is the result of chronic stress typically there's going to be a lot of acute stress and acute stress is just like a very high stressful high adrenaline fight or flight type situation but there's also the chronic stress which is going to be the one that wears down on your body and soul. It's going to be the one that chips away, and it's going to be the one that's that's set off by the shoelace, by that one shoelace that just would not tie up, would not stay tied up. A really good way uh, to deal with this is meditation. Many times you don't know you're under stress, you know, and I think the same thing is going to be true in a SHTF situation because you're going to be constantly going, going, going. And uh, you're not really going to realize that, you know, you're under stress and that it's affecting your decision-making abilities. So taking, you know, 5-10 minutes, even just 5-10 minutes to meditate every day, just close your eyes and try to don't think about anything. That, that's the goal with meditation, essentially, is to try to clear your mind. Because uh, even when you're sleeping, your mind's active. And, you know, sometimes in just clearing your mind and focusing on your breathing, you know, you can really start to... Your brain can sort of, in the background, reassess what your priorities are and what you need to worry about, what you don't need to worry about. And it's a great way to alleviate anxiety and thus alleviate the consequences of stress so breathing is is crucial and uh, breathing actually is something you can do you know on an ongoing basis there's other forms of relaxation you know that you can do and I know it's some of you might be saying oh how am I supposed to relax in a SHTF grid down scenario well I think it's it's very important that you take that proactive um, that you try at least to have, even if it's only a few minutes a day of peace and, and silence, you know, in order to better prepare yourself to act accordingly. Because it, it can make all the difference between that straw that breaks the camel's back and you keeping your cool and following the root of logic and rationality. All it takes is one little, little tiny thing, one little bug that just will not leave you alone for you to just say, fuck this, and make some bad decision. So give yourself that moment that you need, or those moments that you need to, to reset your emotional state. Any, any, uh form of rest and recovery is anti-stress so any form of uh, you know even sleep uh, you know any sort of recovery oriented exercise a lot of those are not going to be available in an SHTF situation which is why I don't bring up things like going to the sauna going to the hot tub you know getting massage things of that nature lots of that 
you know, unless you know certain people or make your own, uh, those things aren't going to be available to you. But it's most people think, you know, they, they don't prioritize stress that much. They say, well, we got to do what we got to do. We got to meet our basic needs. And I agree with that 100%. But at some point down the road, everything's going to start to break down. And if you're not, if you're not responding in a way which is devoid of any sort of, um, emotional stress then like I said uh, you know bad decisions are going to be made and they could that could mean the difference between life or death so something to consider anyways and uh, learning how to cope with these things while the grid is up you know taking some stress management courses, doing a martial art or something that teaches you how to cope with under the pressure and not only not only cope with acute stress, but like I'm saying, find ways to vent that stress in your life, to, circ- to allow that stress to circumvent around you and being able to deal with more. And I think that the way you push your stress threshold further is just to put yourself in, uh, you know, trying to get as close to the fire without getting burned, so to speak. So try to, you know, try to push yourself beyond your comfort zone and put yourself in stressful situations. If you're a person that doesn't like confrontation, know learn to be more assertive if you're if you don't like exercise force yourself to exercise force yourself to do what you don't want to necessarily do and you will be incredibly stronger after the fact from doing that anyways just a few things for you to think about today please don't forget to like comment subscribe Canadian prepper out